The most hip hop halftime show happened this past Sunday, and I thought it was pretty dope. So, welcome to the Bar 4 Podcast. And this week, I'm going to talk about that halftime show, among other things, because you can only talk about halftime shows for so long. So, if you aren't aware, or if you were not aware, uh, the halftime show featured Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. If you've watched the previous podcast, I made some predictions where I was under the assumption that we may begin some new music. That clearly wasn't the case. So I had said something along the lines of Kendrick should drop something. He should at least drop a single, but uh, he didn't do that. Uh, Neither did Eminem. And same thing with Dr. Dre. Uh, The only thing we got from Dr. Dre was the... I think the songs from GTA 5 from his expansion made it to streaming. So that was cool. Uh, but we did get albums from Mary J. Blige and Snoop Dogg. Uh, I didn't get a chance to listen to Mary J. Blige's album yet, but I've heard good things. And Snoop Dogg's is it's solid. It's a Snoop Dogg album in 2022. It's it's good, but I mean, kind of what you expect at this point. Uh, but as far as the halftime show goes, they more or less played the hits, the stuff that everyone expected them to play, and overall, I, th- I just thought it was well done. Um, I mean, I'm not the most hype person, or the most, like, I'm not going to go wild, but I was sitting here watching watching the show, just on, on the TV, and I was in Discord, but <laughs> all my friends could attest. I wasn't really saying much. I was just enjoying and just taking it all in. Um, it it was just, it felt like a celebration, essentially. And if anything, it felt more of a celebration of Dr. Dre, uh, just because of his, how prominent he was featured in the, uh, in the halftime show, which, to be fair, makes sense. I mean, he's, he brought on so many people, but aside from that, um, I think something that a lot of people didn't talk about, or few people talked about, but it's not as vocal, I guess, was Mary J. Blige's performance. That was amazing. Like, bruh. They, and it was weird when I was watching it because you heard the crowd hella hype. Because um, I forget exactly the order now, um, but I think it was Snoop Dogg performing, and then it went to Mary J. Blige, and the crowd kind of got quiet, and I was like, damn, that's that's messed up. But to be fair, I mean, I would you could argue that hip hop is more popular than R and B, so it makes sense. Not everyone in the crowd may be fully aware of her legacy. <laughs> so um but I thought her performance was amazing. Um so it was just it was just interesting to watch. Like the way they rolled it out, it it was weird because at first I thought it was just a bunch of like trail like truck trailers, uh, which they may very well may have been. They may have repurposed them, but it was basically just a bunch of houses, and every person was essentially assigned a house. <laughs> I mean, at least that's how it felt. Um, except for Kendrick, Kendrick was just on the field. But it was it was interesting that they did it that way. Um, and then the way it the transitions were just really well done too. Um, I know a lot of people are clowning on 50 Cent for hanging upside down and looking a little chunkier, I guess. But I thought it was—I thought it looked fine. And <laughs> I saw something where, like, a closer look of um, of the performance, and you can see him setting up and getting in position right before he's supposed to perform. So y'all need to come some slack. That's not an easy thing to do, like to get yourself, like, to do it yourself and without any assistance to like pull up and like hang upside down like that's not easy so 50 cent did his thing and i was i'm not surprised that he was there but i'm glad he was like i i would have been fine either way if he didn't show up but it's very appropriate that he was there given dr dre and eminem being there uh snoop dog did snoop dog things he sounds and looks exactly the same but that's something that the looks thing is something that i <laughs> actually heard my teacher say today and like I'm just like no, I mean he's always kind of looked like that. Snoop Dogg's one of those guys that's always that's that's Snoop Dogg. Um, I love that he pulled up in a 
like full blue suit and was crib walking and throwing up seas like we got that on tv uh another major thing that everyone is talking about and i personally didn't even notice when it happened was the nfl specifically told eminem to not kneel (laughs) uh, because he was planning to and the time at which he did it was pretty like he kind of snuck it in there because it was right at the transition when Dr. Dre was going to the, to the piano and I was just focused on Dr. Dre playing the piano because I was like, oh right, he can do that. Like, he's, he, he knows his way around instruments. And at that time, Eminem kneeled. Which, if you, if you don't know the politics behind it, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, there are people that are better suited to explain it than I am. But the way I took it is it was more in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick and just black people in general uh, but there's people that are going to go way into it and feel some sort of way so we'll we'll kind of uh not discuss that right now but i do appreciate that he did that what was also interesting is that well kendrick's the way kendrick came in was really cool like all those boxes um and with good kid Matt, or Mad City, um, like, sorry, it was a good kid, I'm dumb, um, but the way he came in was just really, it was more creative, I felt, than, like, Dre and Snoop, how they came in, um, and then, but during his performance, what was very interesting to me that I noticed right away is that he, like, during All Right, he, you know, the line that says, we hate Popo, want to kill, run us down in the street for show, like, he didn't, he didn't say that, which, to me, it was like, all right, that's interesting, uh, especially because I forgot the, the exact line now, but D- uh, Dre had a line about police, and he left that in. So it was interesting, to say the least, that Kendrick censored himself. Um, but, I mean, that could also just be politics. Like, he's trying to make sure his eventual album rollout is smooth and he doesn't get a lot of backlash, but I mean, he even he even used the backlash from when he said that on Damn. So, it, whatever. Um, but overall, I thought it was enjoyable. I, it was a very solid performance. It wasn't anything like super flashy. Like it wasn't like the weekends last year where it was just like overly choreographed. I mean, I say I said overly, but that's that makes it sound bad. Like it was it was a good show. Like, it was well choreographed for the weekend. Um, But, you know, it wasn't necessarily to that extent. Uh, But I appreciate what we did get, and it was still really good. Um, It honestly just felt like a concert. (laughs) Like, a quick 12-minute show. Um, Also, that transition from Kendrick to Forgot About Dre was so good. I loved it. Um, But yeah, uh, we didn't get any new music, unfortunately. Um, even from the people that did release new music, they didn't announce or perform any of the new songs, which, I mean, I guess it was a bit of a stretch to hope and think that they would, because these are all artists, with the exception of Kendrick, who have been in the game for a while. I mean, Kendrick, yeah, but his career is much shorter, not much, but it is shorter in comparison to everyone else's. So it made sense for them to perform the hits, essentially. Uh, for Kendrick, I feel like he could have done pretty much anything. Same with Eminem. He could have done pretty much anything and would have been fine. But it does make sense that they performed the songs that they performed because that's what everyone was kind of looking for. At least, like, the fans that aren't super into their music to the point where they're just foaming at the mouth for <laughs> new music. Like, I mean, to be fair, Kendrick hasn't dropped in, like, what, five years now? Um, so, I mean, it's coming, but... Uh, Speaking of Kendrick, switching gears slightly, um, I just saw a quick bit about this, but apparently Kendrick is performing in Italy in June, and the details of that performance was that he will be performing select songs from his upcoming album, or from his new album. So, that's cool. Um... That's probably the most confirmation we have as far as a Kendrick album, other than him saying 
new flows on the way. Be patient. Um, you know, because it's been so long since Kendra dropped. We're basically just like any bit of information we get, we're going to go after. Uh, but it is interesting that they said that in the description. I wouldn't necessarily like put all mags in that basket. Uh, but if it is, if that is the case, it's possible that we'll be getting music on the way to June. Like we'll probably get a single sometime between now and then. I mean, it's Kendrick though, so. He could also just drop the album. Uh, that is also something that he's totally capable of doing. Um, but, you know, it's it's hard to say. I think what messed everyone up regarding Kendrick's release right now, though, before I forget about it, is that <laughs> Ebro said something about the uh, single coming out before the Super Bowl. So everyone's like, oh, he's going to drop. He's dropping. Where, where's, that? where's the song? But then it didn't happen. Um, but... Regardless, the the performance that he has in June gives us a new window. So it could be that the album comes out right before June, or it'll be right after. Like, since it said a few songs, I forget the exact wording, because like I said, I just kind of glanced at it. Uh, like it, it could just be like a preview or it could just be all the singles that he releases, or just the songs that he wants to perform mixed in as a medley with all of his other tracks. Anything's possible with Kendrick. Um, switching gears a little bit again. Uh, Kanye has been wild. Um, I don't want to go spend too much time on this because the details are very interesting. But uh, last week, I don't remember exact day, but he threatened to back out of Coachella because Billie Eilish would be at Coachella and Billie Eilish didn't say anything wrong or do anything wrong. The whole beef with Billie Eilish is that she gave a fan an inhaler when they needed it and everyone kind of ran with it and just compared it to how Astroworld was handled. That's that's way too much of a stretch to just start beef with someone that's completely irrelevant to you. Like cuz I don't think she specifically said anything. Like so yeah, I think even in the um even in the Instagram post about it, she commented and was like, "I didn't even say anything about that." <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like it I think I think Kanye does what everyone else does on the internet and just kind of glances at headlines and just assumes and takes it as fact, but it is what it is. Um, but with that in mind, he then on, I think it was Saturday, said that Kid Cudi won't be on Donda 2 because he's friends with Billie Eilish. Cool. <laughs> um... But that also kind of just, well, yeah, it it very quickly spiraled into a just Cuddy just saying a lot of things, which it's fair. I mean, basically what he said was like, you wouldn't be where you are without me, essentially. And if you know anything about Cuddy, that tracks because a lot of 808s and Heartbreaks had Kid Cuddy's help. And influence and everything that he's done since then has had a little bit of that too like Kid Cudi brought in a sound and Kanye made it popular essentially um, that's simplifying it way way more than it actually is but that's kind of the gist of it uh, but but then um, Cudi said something like oh you're a dinosaur <laughs> which I just thought was funny and then because it was because I was on Twitter and I just saw it. I thought it was really interesting that uh, <laughs> Lupe chimed in a little bit. <laughs> like, uh, I think someone asked him, like, oh, how do you feel about this? Like, um, because, you know, Cuddy is still good and I think Lupe respects him as an artist, but um, he's basically, or someone was like, oh, do you side with Kanye on this? And he's like, like you, I can, I can hate a dude and still think they're the GOAT. 
because I don't remember the exact beef he has with Cuddy, but he basically said, like, I can call someone a bitch, but they're still a goat. <laughs> like, something like that. So I, I just thought it was funny. It wasn't really anything serious or anything beyond that. Um, and then, you know, all we've gotten since then has been, I think, confirmation that the next Donda 2 or the Donda 2 um, like listening event, I guess, is happening on the 22nd in Florida? Um, so, I mean, if the listening event is going to be on the 22nd, are we going to get that album on the 22nd? Probably not. Um, but, you know, anything's possible with Kanye. It, I don't take any release date that he gives seriously. Like, just take anything he says with a grain of salt because there's going to be some reason it gets pushed back. I would be surprised if we get that album before March. Um, maybe April. In all honesty, like, I don't expect it to be there or come out that soon. Also, because I didn't mention it before, apparently Future's executive producing it, so all the toxic memes are running around. So I, I and I just thought it was fun too. Um, and then literally just as I started like set up to record, I saw that um, apparently him and Julia Fox broke up, which I don't care, but you might. But apparently, what she said. <laughs> She basically said something along the lines of like, oh no, I was just using him. <laughs> Which is kind of fucked. But um, Kanye is, per- I guess, cool with it. Um, Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that there's anything else I need to say um, before I get into the music bit. Um, but, oh, yeah. If you haven't checked out the Saba review, it's amazing. Like, the, not the review. The review is mediocre. I mean... You know what to expect from me. But the album was great. And if you haven't watched the short film, definitely do so because it it makes everything connect even more. Um, I'm not going to go into the whole album review, but the album, great album. Probably, well, as of right now, it is my favorite album of the year. And it'll more than likely be on my top 10 by the end of the year. Like, I would be very surprised. Um, I think it's some amazing music has to drop for it to get bumped off. Um, now is the point at which I talk about music that I've listened to and enjoyed recently. Um, so I know I mentioned, I don't have a name for this yet, and I know I mentioned I was going to do this more um, kind of like every week, but I just, you know, it's, it's we're in a weird spot where a lot of the music that's dropping, at least that's getting on my radar, is more popular music that everyone's kind of listened to. Um, so I want to have like two tracks at a time to uh, put on showcase. Um, but regardless, um, that's the whole. There's a whole lot of stuff in the background to kind of think about for me with that. But the two tracks that I have for y'all today are really dope. Or at least I like them. I mean, you can feel however you want about them. The first track this week is from Rue Shankle featuring Monty Draper, titled Radio, off of his latest album, Rue. Yeah, right. Open door swing to the left. I must have forgot it. Let me remind myself. Uh, we could get lost. I just need to find myself. Uh, we can see fraudulence. Homie, I cannot call a shit. Blowing trees in the garden. Another day at the office. Uh, golly, gosh. Blunt row, cush. Got them all hush mode. They don't exist. Yeah. As you can tell, that track is smooth. I particularly love the bass line and the production is from DJ Basta from the Bay and also Rue and Mani obviously from the Bay Grand National um, but there it was just it's just such a good intro song to this project and then I cut it off before Mani came in because it'd be too crazy but Mani's verse is just insane like he doesn't it's relentless <laughs> uh, but Rue did his thing it that and the chorus on the song is just very enjoyable. Uh, the second song I have literally just came out today and is from Deontay Hitchcock featuring Byrie and Dende titled Neck Up. Uh, very appropriate 
song for <laughs> Valentine's Day. Whoa, whoa, damn. Where did you come from? That puts an A plus. Gotta keep it a hunt done. Now she ain't the one, but that hit second to none. And she go stupid on the lollipop, baby. Go dumb, dumb. So, like I said, very appropriate song for Valentine's Day. And I mean, I would urge you to listen to the rest of the song because both Dende and Byrie kill it. Um, if you aren't aware with either of them, definitely check them out also. They're very popular on the Twitters. Um, but I don't know if my listeners and the people that are on Twitter have enough of an overlap, so definitely want to showcase these two guys as well, or at least let you be aware of them. Um, but those are the tracks. Let me know what y'all thought about those tracks, and if you have any music or suggestions, I have a submission form, finally. Um, I'll put it in the description, but it's just a Google form. Uh, put your name or the artist's name. Um, I like to put, like, I want emails in there because I don't want just spam, but, um, your name or the artist's name, the song, and just a quick description of y'all, because I want to know what I'm getting myself into, and I'm sure you guys do as well. Uh, but that's where I will end it for today, because that's all I got to talk about. Um, but... Let me know in the comments below what you thought of these tracks, how you felt about the Super Bowl, and all that Kanye stuff. I'm kind of indifferent at this point, but it's just wild. So, I like to bring it up. But, um, also, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you for watching, and please stay safe out there.